Hi, this is Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to talk about solving quadratic equations by completing the square. Now, first I have to tell you I'm at home. So, I live with cats and dogs and noise outside, so you'll probably hear some of my domestic noise. Okay, we're going to start with an easy example and build up to more difficult examples. How about x squared minus 4x plus 7 equals 0? We're going to solve this by completing the square. This is what you have to do step by step. Step 1. Take your C number and move it over to the other side of the equal sign. By the way, the coefficient of the x squared term is referred to as a. The coefficient of the x term, the linear term, is referred to as b. And the constant at the end is referred to as c. So in this problem, a is 1, b is negative 4, and c is 7. I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides of the equation. Now if you ask why, I'm going to say it's because we're solving a quadratic equation by completing the square, and this is part of the method. I'll be left with x squared minus 4x equals negative 7. Now we're going to complete the square. I'm going to add parentheses to both sides of the equation. And I am going to square the parentheses. Okay? You do this too on your own paper. Now remember we talked about A, B, and C. Your B number for this particular quadratic equation is negative 4. I am going to take the B number, negative 4, put it in the parentheses, and I'm going to multiply it in the parentheses by 1 half. I'm going to do exactly that over on the other side of the equation. In both sets of parentheses, I have negative 4 times 1 half. Now what is negative 4 times 1 half? It's the same thing as negative 4 divided by 2. It's negative 2. So I have x squared minus 4x plus parentheses negative 2 squared equals negative 7 plus parentheses, negative 2 squared. Now over on the left side, I mean of course negative 2, I could go ahead and say that this is x squared minus 4x plus 4, but I don't have to do that on the left side. I want you to watch something. I'm going to do this instead. Make a pair of parentheses and square them. And inside the parentheses I'm going to write x and then I'm going to write my b number minus 2. x squared minus 4x plus 4, which is what negative 2 squared is, factors into x minus 2 squared. We have just completed the square. We have manufactured a perfect square trinomial. And a perfect square trinomial is always factored like this into a binomial squared. Now, over on the other side of the equation, I'm going to write negative 2. Well, I'm going to write equals negative 7 plus 
negative 2 squared is 4, so I'll have negative 7 plus 4. Coming down to the next line, I'll have x minus 2 squared equals negative 3. Now the whole reason I did this was so I could use the square root method, which says I take the square root of each side of the equation. So I'm going to take the square root of the left side of the equation, x minus 2, parentheses squared, I'm taking the square root of that, equals plus or minus the square root of negative 3. Now when I take the square root of a binomial squared, I'm left with the binomial, x minus 2, and no more radical and no more square. Over on the other side, I'm going to punch out my i. That is, whenever you have the square root of a negative number, the square root of the negative becomes the letter i. So I'll have i times the square root of 3. Plus or minus i times the square root of 3. Then to solve for x, I'm going to add 2 to both sides, and I'm going to be very careful so that when I add my 2, I add it in front of the plus or minus sign over on the right-hand side. Now, over on the left-hand side, I'll have negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. I'm left with an x. Over on the right-hand side, I'll have 2 plus or minus i times the square root of 3. However, that's not quite the correct way to write it. Recall that when we write complex numbers, we write them in a plus b i form. i has to go on the end. So our answer is going to be 2 plus or minus the square root of 3 i. Now, if you're working in my math lab, you'll write these separately. There will be x and then a box, a, an answer box in which you write your answers. So you'll say 2 minus the square root of 3 i, comma, 2 plus the square root of 3 i. Okay, this was an example of the easiest kind of quadratic equation to solve with completing the square. Principally, here it is. When your a equals 1 and your b is an even number, that's the easiest case. In fact, that makes completing the square the very easiest way to solve a quadratic equation. If only they would always be like that, but they're not. So the next one we do is going to be a little more difficult. Talk to you soon.